something that I thought about going back to the money story. When I was um, five or six, I can't remember exactly. It was in like in between kindergarten and first grade. I set a little tiny clothes iron that I got for Christmas, like a little mini kid clothes iron. I set up a sign on my mailbox that I would iron people's clothes. I set up a little business. I actually put up a sign. I had my little cash box. I collected friends. We sat on the front porch. Like it was a legit little business. I sat on that porch all day and I was waiting to have my first customers on my little clothes ironing business. <laughs> and I lived at that time, uh, it was a I grew up in Southeast Missouri and that particular street was a very low income area. Not that there's any area where a little kid ironing clothes is a real legitimate business, but <laughs> I, so cars would drive by all day and I'm like, you know, come on, finally a car pulled up in the driveway. I was like, yes, I plugged in my clothes iron. I got ready. I was ready to like have my business. This man walks up. I was so disappointed because he was not there for me. He was there to see my father. So needless to say, at the end of the day, I did not have a sale and my business quickly went under that day that I put it up. Later the evening, my father was asking me about it. And he said, you know, that's a really silly thing to have done. Of course, you were not going to be successful ironing clothes. Plus, that's not what we do. We don't have businesses. You have to get a job. You have to work overtime. You have to punch a time clock. And you're a girl. You're not going to be able to have a business. I was really heartbroken. And I was a very gregarious young. I loved to be creative as a child and come up with things like ironing clothes for a business. I even tried to start a flea market in my shed. I was very wanted to think differently. That was one event that really deep set, set a money mindset and the ability to not believe that I had value or worth as a female in the business world. That was a small little thing. My father didn't mean it. The intention wasn't, you can't do it, you're a failure, you're a woman. He didn't intend on it being that way. He only knew the lens that he knew, which was in our area, very few people made it out had businesses successful. If you did have successful businesses, you were rich, you were a crook, you had money that it was handed down to you. So there was a lot of programming that my father had, all of my family had, and now I was getting certain programming. So the reason I'm telling you this is 10 different lessons here. Number one, I was taught what I was taught. I saw what I saw. And even though I had a belief somewhere inside of me, the patterns and what I heard, and then what I felt and believed from what I heard retrained even the deepest intuitive part of me that wanted to be different. I learned a lot about my self worth from that. And I didn't, I didn't remember that story for years until I started really understanding my brain. And I've told that story in so many different ways. And I never really fully understood how it affected and deep seated my brain until I saw it for what it was. And I saw it for what I felt. I never went back and really processed how I felt. But when I started processing how I felt, I had a trained neuro coach walk me through that to train me how to think differently. 